Okay, going to show you how to do uh, lab two. In lab two, you're going to learn how to use your calculators, one variable statistics command to come up with a, a list of summary statistics for a data set. So over here on the left, I've got the first page of lab two. At the top, I've got a data set. And uh, we're supposed to answer questions one through 12 here. And we want to learn how to use the calculator to do that. Uh, I want you to notice that this data set I'm using here at the top of the page is different from the one you've got to use in your lab. So uh, you, ought to, you ought to be coming up with different numbers uh, because you're going to have a different data set here. Uh, never, nevertheless, I'm going to show you how to use the calculator uh, to answer these questions uh, pretty quickly here. So let's do that now. Uh, the first thing we want to do in question one, uh, we're being asked to sort the data and then write the list of sorted data uh, in the space between questions one and two and then find the median. So let's go ahead and work on that. First thing we want to do is enter the data into the calculator's list environment. So to do that, uh, open up your calculator's list environment by pressing the stat button, then enter. We'll go ahead and enter this data in. Once we've entered the data in, we probably ought to use our arrow keys here, scroll back through the data, and just double check that we've entered that in correctly. So once we've done that, we're ready to sort the data. Uh, recall to sort the data, it's quite easy. Press the stat button and press the two button to access the sort ascending command. And once you press the two button, that'll paste the sort ascending command to the calculator's home screen. We now want to tell the calculator what list we want it to sort before we uh, execute the sort algorithm here. So uh, to do that, remember, we're going to press second one to make the one button a list one button, then press enter, and the calculator went ahead and sorted uh, list one. So now to view the sorted data, open the calculator's list environment again. To do that, press stat enter. So there it all is. Let's go ahead and list that here. Okay, so once we've got our data sorted in ascending fashion, it ought to be quite easy to find the median. Uh, recall that the median is the number right in the middle of the sorted data. If for this data set, we have an even number of entries. There's 10 data values. And so there's no single number in the middle. To find the median, you want to locate the middle two numbers, the middlemost two numbers. So that's going to be, it uh, looks like 35 and 45. And we'll find the average or the midpoint between 35 and 45. And of course, the midpoint between those two numbers is 40. Okay, so that means the median is 40. And of course, one way to show that that's 40 is you can just use the calculator to find the midpoint or the average between 35 and 40. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Press second quit to exit out to the home screen. Uh, then to find the average, 35 plus 45, 80. So then go ahead and divide by two. And of course it's 40, the midpoint between 35 and 45. So median is 40. There's our sorted data. Let's go ahead and proceed to uh, real quickly answer questions 2 through 12. So to answer all these questions you want to have the calculator uh, find all these statistics for you and to do that you want to access the one variable statistics command the one var statistics command. To access that command press the stat button arrow over one time right arrow over one time until you reach this calc drop down menu uh, on this menu, you can see that the first entry is one var stats. That's the command we want to use here. So if I press the enter button now, or if I press the one key, so I'm getting this pop-up screen here, uh, and that's what happens with TI-84. 
If you have a TI-83, it's slightly different. Uh, I'm going to show you that after I do this with the 84. So after I do this with the 84, I'll go ahead and do it with the 83 so that those of you with both calculators see how you can do this problem. Uh, we want to tell the calculator right now what list uh, we want to run the, the algorithm on, and of course that's list 1. So right here under this list item, we want to make sure we've got L1 there. So if you don't have L1 there, to put L1 there, you just press second one. And for frequency list here, you want to leave that completely blank. Leave that completely, completely blank. Then just use your arrow key to highlight the calculate button uh, and then press enter. Once you've done that, you should have this printout here. Uh, from this printout, we can tell what the mean is. The mean is going to be X bar. So for this data set, the mean will be 42.6. Uh, the next thing we're asked for is the median. Of course, that's 40. Um, you can see the median here. If you just arrow, right arrow, I'm sorry, down arrow, and you can see the rest of the printout here. So it can up arrow and scroll back through what was given to me. So we've got quite a few things here. If I down arrow, you can see, sure enough, the median is 40. So I'm looking for the mode here on this printout. I don't see it. So one downside of using the one bar stats command is it has no mode button, or it doesn't give you the mode. So to, to, to find the mode, let's just go ahead and look at the data, the sorted data. Remember that the mode is the most frequently occurring data entry. Uh, when we look at the sorted data, it doesn't look like any one of the data points repeat. So therefore, there's no mode. No mode for this data set. OK, next thing is to find the standard deviation. To find standard deviation, you can do that from your printout here for the one bar, uh, one bar stats command. OK, so right now we're looking at there's two values of standard deviation given. Uh, there's SX. This is standard deviation for a sample. And then we've got a sigma X here. That's the value for standard deviation if we had a population data set. So right now we're told we're given a sample. So that means we need to take the value for SX as our standard deviation. Or if on the other hand we knew we were given population data set, then in that case we would want to take sigma x, the value for sigma x, as our uh, standard deviation. So we're going to go ahead and take sx, that's 25, oh, whoops, um, so if that happens to you, let's see, we're going to clear that, and let's go ahead and rerun the one variable statistics command, remember to do that, press the stat button, arrow over one time to get to the calc drop down menu, then press enter, you get this settings window, Make sure frequency list is completely blank, uh, and list is list one, so we'll go ahead and calculate. There we go. Okay, so scroll down here. We want to take the value of SX here as our standard deviation, and we're going to go ahead and round that to the tenths. Let's go ahead and round that value to the tenths. So the next value to get is the variance. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't give you the variance. The one variable statistics command does not give you the variance. So there's a couple of ways to get the variance. Uh, one way to do it is to just take your value for standard deviation and square that or multiply it by itself. If you're going to do this now, do not square the round off value. So do not square 25.5. Instead, you want to take all of these digits uh, 25 point all of these digits here and then square that. So let's go ahead and enter in that number. That's 25. Whoops. Uh oh. So let's see if I can get that back. Okay, it doesn't look like the calculator wants to cooperate. If I start typing in 25, I, I lose my printout here. So let me, let me show you an easier way. I don't know if it'll be easier, but one way to find uh, the variance. 
is you can access the value, the stored value for SX, the 25.4 and some change, uh, by calling on the variable SX. So what we're going to do is call on the variable SX, paste it to the home screen, and then square it. So to get that done, press the VARS button right here, the VARS button. And then five for these statistics variables. And if you notice that SX is number three, I'm going to press the three button here. This will copy and paste the symbol for standard deviation over to the calculator's home screen. Uh, right now the calculator has the stored value for SX. To square that, we're just going to press this uh, X squared button and then hit enter. That'll give us the variance. So the variance we're going to put in there, it's about 648.0. Uh, we'll go ahead and round that to the tenths. To find the range, uh, recall that the range is just equal to the maximum value minus the minimum. So we'll go ahead and take a look at our printout for the one variable statistics command and uh, find out what our maximum and minimum is. So if I scroll down using the arrow keys here, you can tell the max and the min are 12 and 88. Okay, so let's go ahead and write those in. Minimum is 12, maximum is 88. Okay, so that means range is going to be max minus min, that's 88 minus 12. And we'll go ahead and calculate that, get a number for that. Uh, it's going to be 76. Okay. So range for this data set, 76. Uh, next thing we want to do is, is find values for quartiles 1, 2, and 3. And to do that, just rerun your one variable statistics command. And use your arrow keys to scroll down. And you ought to be able to find, here we go, Q values for Q1. So the Q1 value, quartile 1, that's 22. Um, I don't see a value for Q2, and that's, of course, because the median is Q2. So we're going to press 40. We're going to type in 40 for that. And Q3 is 62. Okay, so there, there you have it. That's how you use the one variable statistics command on the calculator uh, to quickly uh, get all these summary statistics for a, a data set. So if you happen to have a TI-84, uh, I showed you how to do one variable stats command. Let's take a look at how to do or how to call up the one variable stats command if you have a TI-83. To run the one variable statistics command on the uh, data set is slightly different. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over how to do that. Uh, of course, the first thing we need to do is enter the data into the calculator's list environment. Okay, once we've got that done, it's time to run the one variable statistics command on the data set to generate the list of uh, one variable statistics. To do that, press the stat button, arrow over to the calc drop down menu. You can see that the one variable statistics command is um, menu item one, so I'm going to press the one button, or you could hit enter. This will paste the one variable stats command over to the calculator's home screen. We now need to tell the calculator what list we want to find the statistics for, and of course that's list one. So we're gonna make our one button into a list one button by pressing the second button first. So press second, one, that gives us list one. When you press enter, uh, we're gonna get the summary statistics for uh, the data. So there it is, there they all are. And so we've just about got everything we need there from that printout to answer the, the questions 1 through 12 here.
Okay, so that gives you an idea of how to do uh, the first page in the lab, the problems in the first page in the lab. If you scroll through the lab, uh, there's a different type of question on page two. Uh, and for that type of question, uh, I actually made another video to show you how to do uh, those questions. I'll go ahead and put that uh, a link to that video in the comments section of this video. And for the third page, you're, you're going to use uh, the same commands that you used for uh, the problems on this page to solve or, or find the numbers that you need to find for uh, answering the questions on the third page in the lab. And then in the fourth page of the lab, it's just like the first page. I give you a different data set here, and I ask you to run one variable statistics on the calculator to, to quickly find all uh, values for all these statistics. Okay, so uh, there you have it. Uh, you just need to use the two videos I've got posted uh, to help you uh, figure out how to complete the lab. If you have any questions about the lab or you're jammed up, please do contact me or come see me in person uh, before class or during office hours.